The views expressed and the opinions given by the individual host and their guests do not necessarily reflect those of Para-X, its affiliates, or its sponsors. It's coming. All these voices. They're not yours. You had no right to them when you were alive, and you have no right to them when you're dead. Huh? Say, That's what it sounded like. Good, you know who I am. And you know I'm not playing. You're going to let those women go. In Jesus' name, you're going to let those women go. Even here watching this right now? Watching this Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Staring into the Abyss. I am your host, horror author James Hershey Jr., and with me, as always, my co-host, old boy James Ash. How you doing, brother? What is up, misfits? How you doing, motherfuckers? Uh, on tonight's show, we're going to be talking about um, a case that we've been working, and the case is finally closed. And so I'm going to turn over to old boy. He's been taking the lead on this one. And he's going to kind of go through it for us and explain what was going on, what we did, and just all the details. We The guy uh, actually did a, a post on his social media um, that I can put up in this video if we want, if oh boy, if, if that's something you want to do. I screenshotted it so I can put that up and then read it. And uh, I'll do that right here. Okay, so now that I've done that, I haven't actually done it yet, but... They'll think I did it. Now that I've done that and edited it in, um, I'm going to turn it over to Old Boy and let him explain everything that's going on. So, Old Boy, go ahead, brother. Thank you, guys, and good evening. And I hope you guys are having a good summer. It's the hottest month of the year. Yeah, Donald Perdue. Yes, you are allowed to. Pardo, um, you are allowed to do it. He doesn't give us. He doesn't give a fuck. He's let us. He's a good guy. Uh, lives in Long Beach. He used to be. He used to do fa- uh, uh, race. Uh, like car racing, motorcycle racing, um, stuff like that. It was really well known. He actually was uh, actually a professional. He actually flies airplanes. He's a really cool guy. Um, he was having a lot of issues nine and a half months ago. Got to hold me around. Well, he didn't. Some lady in Pennsylvania, I don't want to bring her name in, called me and told me that he was having issues. They were on a site. Uh, uh, a psychic kind of site, I think it is. They told me this is where they found me, and they knew who I was, and got a hold. She got a hold of me, and he. She said it was a guy in Long Beach, and she told me the situation. We've talked about when we first. I did the, the actual investigation. We did something about him, and we actually had a video of him, and James put it on the thing like seven, six or seven months ago. It was about that, seven months ago, and I've been helping him ever since. And this has been a pain in the ass. The lady ended up, I tried to help her, but just consequences didn't work out. The people, she was, she was not a horrible person, but she just, it's hard to talk to people. And some people are set in their ways and I tried to get people to help her and we did and it didn't work out. But I don't hate her. I hope she gets help on what her situation. I can't help her anyway. I'm in another state. We had other people help her and it's because we have people in Pennsylvania and we tried to help her and it ended up not being that way. But that wasn't my case. This one was. Donald is a really nice, wonderful man. He's going to be 74 or just turned 74. And he's retiree. And he's been living in his place. He had no issues. So originally what I thought was going on is he said the neighbors next door had adult, uh, teenage kids or maybe in their 18s or whatever, maybe 20. And they were messing around with Ouija boards. And I guess he saw it and he told the neighbors next door and then they got mad, he thinks, and they did something. Well, what I didn't realize is he found out later on that people were murdered or or the lady was shot by her boyfriend that used to live there years before that in that place. And he shot himself. And But they weren't the problem. He ended up having and what I think were succubus and incubus because it was a male and female. And I think that the female would make it where it was all like make him feel wonderful while the, the succubus, uh, the incubus would 
sucked the soul out of him pretty much and was trying to do weren't I, I can say was trying to basically rape him and this was going on for for like a year before I started talking to him he had somebody come in from I think from Yucca Valley, I think, and try to charge him $250, $200 for gas, supposed to be, she's supposed to be famous or something. I don't know if she was, he said something about ghost adventures or, or helped baggins or something. And she couldn't help him, but for a day, then he had some other guy trying to charge 1750 from Florida that couldn't help him. They had somebody else try to help him. That didn't a couple other people did and they couldn't help him. He had preacher priests come in and that didn't help. He was so scared. He was sleeping in his fucking truck. Cause he said, this thing was even trying to attack him there, trying to kill him pretty much. He was a, he was contemplating killing himself he's never had any issues he's never had any stuff like this the weird thing is he did he did tell me his wife was his ex-wife was a witch but he said if they don't hate each other or nothing like that whatever and that's none of my business that's a possibility and i don't know which one because he had two but i don't think it had anything to do with this because they've been divorced for years um so i went down there and, and i helped the man and what was crazy when I went to his house, the thing don't like me and I wasn't scared of it. And it's scared of me. He said it. He did not like me or my wife. My wife went with me. If you guys don't know who Jackie is, she's my wife. She's also the second investigator uh, uh, pitcher lady because that's what she does. And she speaks in two different languages to the ghost. And she, she's pretty well uh she's a dream chaser too she chases dreams she's involved she walks in dreams she does a lot of stuff with dreams but that's a whole different story but she's really good at doing what she does and she was she was on this investigation numerous times with me in different times so the first time when i went to his house he said this thing was like snakes if you look at his bed it looked like a snake was laying on the end and there was nothing fucking there I said, fuck you. And I laid on the couch, uh, on his bed, not the couch, on his bed, and it didn't do shit. I'm like, I knew it. So I sat there and argued with it for about an hour, an hour and a half. Then I left. He said a couple, out day, a couple weeks later, it started again. And I'm like, well, I'm not surprised. So I told him what to do, kept doing it. Said a couple months went by, didn't hear nothing from him. January started coming. Oh, it's attacking me. Worth, and I started, I helped him again month or so goes by, March goes by, and he said, it felt like somebody was trying to stab me in the fucking face and shower. Like somebody made me stab it through my mouth, and he said, it hurts so bad. And he says, I've never had this before, and it got bad. That's because it was pissed off at me that I said, fuck this. I called him FaceTime, and I dealt with this fucking thing over and over for a couple weeks. Around April, May, kept arguing with it, so did my wife. We kept to the point where it knew, once it's seen me, it stopped. It didn't like me and didn't want me to come out there. And it was getting to the point where I was going to call James and we're going to just fight this thing. But one day it pissed me off. And I know what you think of me, some people, and I really don't give a fuck. But there's people who do care about me. And I do do stuff and I, I have certain things about me why I can do what I do. Well, it messed up and pushed buttons with me and I took care of this thing. And I said, if you... I'm going to get rid of you. I'm going to make sure you never come back, whatever you are. Because I don't know if it was a, a succubus, incubus, but he told me this thing was attacking him in his dreams also. So I think that's what it was. It could have been, it could have been just a vengeful spirit or a demon for all we know. Um, but I was pissed and was done. And after I did what I did in the way I do things, it stopped. It's not 100%, but it calmly... Every couple of weeks, it would get lighter and lighter and lighter and lighter and lighter to the point where, like, it would touch me. So stop, leave me alone, or I'm going to send James out there after you. And it stopped. And then, like, around May, and I didn't hear nothing for over a month. I'm like, so is it, like, I actually, and he said, around June, it's barely doing anything. It's like 98% gone. And I'm like, I did another little thing in June. It went to July and a half, like the middle of July. I never heard nothing. He's all, it's almost gone. 99, 99% 99 of it's gone. Once in a while, it does this and that to I, okay. August came, it's pretty much gone. And what people don't realize, it isn't like movies. If you ever watched The Entity in the 80s, 
it took years for her to get rid of that thing. It didn't just go all by the guys came out and did like they do in fucking TV and it just goes away. She moved and it still followed her. It took her seven, eight years. This thing took me almost a year to get rid of, like nine and a half months. And this was the biggest battle I've ever fought it with what I've, I know James has dealt with some other stuff, but this was a battle that I wasn't going to lose. Yeah, it's, it, it pissed me off. I would get pet mad. Uh, Jackie would get mad. Um, we would go back and forth with this fucking thing at night, midnight. I wouldn't tell anybody. I told James a little bit here and there, but I was going to quit on this, this, this case. And I didn't. And if it ever comes back, trust me, I'll come back full force on this motherfucker or both of them. Now there's another thing that's there, but I don't think it was bothering him. It, it comforts him. And I think it was trying to help him before from killing himself. And I think that's the only thing really left. And I think that's who was living there, the girl who was killed and she wasn't a bad person. I just said, if she's not bothering you, leave it alone. And he says that she doesn't. And I believe it. And it's no point of me going out there trying to, and I, he, and I, he has told her, you can go, you're, you're all right to go back to wherever you need to go. And slowly it's starting to go away. And he told people on this site that in Ohio, she heard about me. And I guess she tried to help this lady. I tried out and she said the same thing. She was just too much. She goes, old boy and them are, and James are different level than me. I've been doing this for a while, but I do light cases. They do stuff that most people don't mess with. And she knew me and I never even talked to this lady. And she lived up in Ohio and Keppel and people in Europe. And he told us he's going to tell them our story. Because I don't charge people. I, the only reason I did was it was 100 miles away, and he gave me money for gas. That was it. Because I, it's it's a far fucking drive. I'm, I live in – where he was in Long Beach, I live out in Apple Valley, the outskirts, almost 96 miles away. hundred, And that's all it was. I didn't – oh, I got to charge it two, $300. I'm not going to do that. Now – if it's down the street, I won't even charge anybody. I don't charge anybody anything. Now, if I have to go out in the state, you're going to have to pay for my, my ticket. So that's it. That's all I asked. Most people, why don't you charge people? Because that's not what I'm doing. I could charge people 55 just to talk to him, 55 fucking dollars. Just to talk to me, to waste my time and tell you that, that you're wasting my time. And I could tell you some, read to some book. And I'm not going to do that. That's not me. You're not wasting my time. And I'm not going to charge you. I'm here to help people. If I get on TV and that's a possibility, people know who the fuck we are. That's the truth. Big time people know who we are, but I don't care. I'm here to help these people. And it's sad that people take advantage and try to charge 1700 fucking dollars. Oh, go buy my book. That was what was said to him. This was supposed to be somebody famous in Florida, some fucking psychic. And Somebody worked with Baggins. I don't know who exactly it was. I don't know the name, and I'm, I, I'll have to find out more. But when he comes on, we're going to have him on probably, and he could tell us more. Um, it's supposed to work with some famous people. Couldn't help him, but for a day. And oh yeah, go ahead and pay for my book. This shit is what we're talking about. What we have to deal with all the time. Go buy my book. Go buy my shirt. Go buy my my. DVD that's showing me going out there and talking to people and helping them get the fuck out of here for $29.99. You could be a demonologist that, that I, I, and I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I have my opinions and James has our opinions on that. I, I'm not saying, I know people do it. We're good friends with certain people. I, I, if you, if that's what you're really going to do, you better be here and learn and know what you're learning. Because if you don't, I don't give a fuck what you're getting taught over online. It's not going to help you. I'm going to tell you this right now. Some of these people that tried to help them were supposedly famous and did this shit for years and they couldn't help it and I could. What's that say? And I'm not calling out anybody, but we haven't done this for as long as these, some of these people and we're, we, we help people. There's some cases we can't control. You know, there was a case in back East that you can't control what somebody wants and wants to do. They could tell you whatever they want, but at the end of the day, they're going to want that thing out or they're going to keep it. And it destroyed that person. I don't want to get into it because it wasn't my case. Um, but that can happen. 
Not everything's going to be a Hollywood ending, guys, and that's what people need to realize. I helped this man, and I'm I'm proud to help this man, and I would keep helping this man, and I'm going to help whoever needs their help, but I'm not going to charge you. I'm not trying to get famous because uh, I want to be on TV and I can charge you $39.99 to uh, uh, old boys' tactics of, of the dead. It, that's bullshit. I'm not going to do that. James wouldn't do that. James ain't going to sit here and give you a bunch of bullshit. That's why we don't have a show because we're not going to fucking lie. And that's what the problem is. We're not liars. I'm not going to sit here and tell you something that's not true. Neither is James. He ain't going to sit there and ooga booga and go out there. What the fuck was that? Oh, there's a ghost that touched me. That's some bullshit, dude. Some of that shit never happens. I haven't really been touched by about maybe once or twice the whole time I've done this. James, maybe once or twice. Sometimes our people got touched and some people were full of shit and they were lying. Saying they got scratched. When when I could tell what they did is when no one was looking, they, get scra they scratched their back. And instead of arguing with them, I just said, fuck it. Whatever you want to say, dude. And and other people uh, saying something's attacking me and and pretending they're possessed. That 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 was somebody went with us a couple of times and never did again. He, he, he's weird now, and maybe whatever he was trying to do, he, it caught him in the end. You can't play with this shit. People need to realize this. There's a place. An oral grand an Indian burial ground, and people are going there doing investigations without permission. We had people that we were in our group when I originally did this that did this, and I that was some reason I quit doing stuff with some of these people. You, you don't know what you're doing. When somebody told me they knew how to deal with a skinwalker because they watched Ghost Adventures, that was the biggest joke I've ever heard because they saw it on TV how to deal with the, with skinwalkers. Did you know that that James that Zach Baggins taught him how to deal with Skinwalkers and the Skinwalker show, so they knew how to deal with a Skinwalker. And they told me this as a straight face. This was a fan, I guess, that told me this. And I said, do you realize what you're really fucking with? You don't. That's another level, dude. Like, why do you think they do Skinwalker Ranch? Why do you think people... Those things are the... This is why TikTok pisses me off, because they show, like, the cat will kill you. And, and you could tell they edited the voice in it. Skinwalkers ain't no joke. James knows that. He could tell you, those, they'll kill you. you. You don't mess with that kind of shit, dude. Like, unless you know, I don't want to mess with that shit. I would rather not. James, yes, he's not scared of nothing, but he's not stupid. He's, if we have to help somebody, we'll do it. But that's not, that's going to take some, that could kill us. And, and it's not going to scare me, you know, James. We, we know what's going to happen one day. I would rather go out with my shield. But that could kill us. That's something that can kick me in out. You could say we're crazy and we don't know what you're talking about. But most people think skinwalkers exist. There, I mean, Eli Musk, I don't know if you've been seeing, I've been sending James about some of the shit he's been talking on Rogan. He said, all this shit's real. They have secret service. Why would somebody who's a trillionaire lie and say all this stuff for no reason? He's coming out saying there's an eighth ocean. And I mean, some of it's probably bullshit for Rogan, but he's why go on TV with millions? Rogan's got one of the biggest shows in the world, like what, 30 million people or something like that, or 10 million. I don't know exactly. He's got a lot. So, and everybody sees him on TikTok. So, no, everybody knows who Joe Rogan is. Why would you go on there and say all this shit? This stuff is real, people. Not maybe 100% of it, but Skinwalkers is nothing to play with. And people were playing with it like it's a fucking joke. And that's what's crazy to me because you don't know what you're really playing with. This is somebody, people, oh, you're a saint. I'm telling you, I don't play with this shit unless I have to help somebody. I don't mess with skinwalkers. I'm not stupid. I don't mess with these kind of things. Never will. I, 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 I've had a deal with it, I, uh, with the, what they were dealing with. I didn't really go there and I really don't want to, bro. Like, I, 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 People got a window. I don't mess with those kind of shit, dude. I just think that people watch too much of these shows and it's going to get the, it's getting people hurt. And I, and it's crazy because the guy who did the hell house, I don't know if you've seen what Zach Baggins did the hell house. That one guy he had was really never the same again. And people who messed around with that house before he took it down, really shit was going on at that house in Detroit. That was no joke. You guys see the documentary. I mean, I know Zach Baggins did all this bullshit, but there was people 
cops, 10 cops that went there and the shit attacked a cop in front of all these people. This shit was going on. You got to read the stories about that, that house. That house is no joke. And I actually do believe it almost killed Baggins. I believe on this on that show, I think maybe, you know, he made the mistake of locking himself by himself in that house. And it almost damn near killed him and took his sight. Now as one guy almost died. Um, he took him down in that cellar where all this shit was going on and it almost killed him. I believe that to a point that Baggins wasn't making that up. I think that really, that's the show that he, you remember he, he almost fucking, he, the, the, he almost died. He went blind. I don't know if you saw that one, James. That's the one that he kind of changed after that. And that, because I think he, and then he keeps it at his museum, what makes no fucking sense, even though they had it. He like destroyed the house because they were having too much shit. For him to destroy the house is why. And I, I, and that was probably the best thing he did because people were trying to go to that house and he said that there's no way. I mean, me and James would have took that motherfucker on, but he said that the demon that was there was on a level, level eight or nine. That's like seventh circle of hell. <laughs> Like, that's one of the main demons, like, probably was one of the princes. He was saying it was a ram-like or cut with a goat's head. If that's true, that was means it's Abaddon. That's where they got the Abaddon house. Uh, I know they see the stupid movies with the hell house. It's the Abaddon. That's just a movie now. But if it's Abaddon, that's no joke. That's one of the seven sins, bro. Like, that's the angel of death. That, that I mean, it, that's one of the worst demons you could play with other than... Lucifer and Belizebub and some of those, those are on that level, bro. Like those are some of the worst demons you can play with. And he found out. I would have loved to go to that house. I know you would have, James, but I ain't gonna go in there with a bunch of people, don't know what they're doing. Um, I would have probably went in there with a crew of people, just me. I don't I don't need anybody else. I'm not trying to I'd love to have my team, but I don't want them getting hurt. I don't want my wife getting hurt. The only person I trust is maybe Jay I know for a fact is James. And maybe Andy on those two things. Uh with those kind of investigations. Those are the only two people and maybe Mike. Um uh, Mike Ross is a really good preacher, uh priest and he does a lot of stuff through with them i've only met him a couple times on facebook i have i know he's done some stuff with us a couple times they know him better i don't um maybe he would be good but those are the only people i would go do that kind of case with those are level those are top-notch cases like most people can't deal with the case i was dealing with this i'm going to be honest with you that was no joke that was probably a if i was going to a leveling i would probably that was a six and a half seven what I was dealing with were six and sevens, because I go I I I've dealt with tens before. That was no that that's no fun. But these are maybe a seven, both of them together. So it's probably about a seven. This was a pretty crazy case that I was working with. James has probably worked on some worse stuff than I have, but this was my level seven, seven or eight. I wouldn't say eight it wasn't that strong, but these things were fucked up. Now, what I was dealing with in Orange County, other than the lady, it was around an eight. That thing was pretty crazy, and that was on that level. What I've dealt with the, uh, at the cemetery, the Wraith, that was on a level eight. That's I goes from a 10. I have never really messed with a 10. I won't sit here in line and say, I have. No, I haven't. Maybe a nine, and it was brief, and it was something I didn't really want to deal with, and it was really powerful. But sevens are pretty strong, and they were both pretty strong beings or whatever they were. And I got them out of there. And if they come back, then it, that's a possibility that might happen. It might come back. You never know. That means I'll have to deal with it. And I will. I was meant to do this. I was born to do this. If it kills me, oh well. I, I, I would love to, if we do a show, I don't want to just do paranormal, and I don't want to do ghost hunting. Ghost hunting is boring to me. Going to fucking haunted places, unless if it's like Amityville and stuff like that, that's different, but I'd rather help people. I like to talk to people, and I like to help Kate and do cases. And I like crypto. I would love to go out and do crypto, and I know James, James is real passionate. He wants to hunt Bigfoot. The dog man, the chupacabra, um, Mothman, all this shit. We would do it in a heartbeat. You told us you're going to give us a show. Me and James will be on that fucking plane. I'll tell you that right now. 
if you tell us we're going to go to somebody's graveyard, a graveyard, maybe New Orleans. I wouldn't mind doing New Orleans. is pretty crazy. Now this lady's coming out. I don't know if you've been seeing on TikTok. The lady coming out saying that she went to the underground vampires. <laughs> and so people realize this. There really is people who think that consider not like vampires as immortal. They're called them. They did a thing. They really do take people's blood. They have people they pick oh, they get tested, and they have their own little clubs and they drink blood. And and there was actually shows about psychic vampirism. That's where it came from. This lady's going around telling people that she met these people, and it's probably not the smart thing to do. They don't want people knowing what they're doing. They tell people they're vampires, but they don't want people knowing where they do it at and having these meetings. And this is the kind of stuff they do. That's their business is free country. And they're getting consent. But there's people now talking, and I know real vampires, and we've actually met real vampires, like immortal vampires. And I'm like, yeah, okay. But you're on TikTok, still talking. Just like I knew somebody that told me that he was a 2,000-year-old vampire, but it didn't have a job, and he was living on my friend's couch a couple years ago. And this is what he told me. He really thought he was a vampire. And I said, so after 2,000 years, wouldn't you use get your own house and figured you get some riches instead of living on somebody's couch. Well, do I want to keep it undercover? I'm like, you got to be fucking kidding me. Dude, you go outside at day, you get drunk like a normal person. You can't get a job or shit. If you were some kind of vampire in 2000 years and you're living on somebody's couch, I'm sorry. I'm walking out in the sun. I'm done. I'm giving it up. I know James, you would do if that's what you were doing. After 2,000 years living on somebody's couch in some shit apartment, and that's what your life can become for this 2,000 years of living, I'm walking right out in the sun. I'm done. I, I, I don't know what it, what's your opinion. I know it's, I was just trying to be funny because we were talking about Don, Donald, um, but this is the kind of shit that I see on TikTok, and this is why I just laugh. But I'm sorry. If I was a vampire, I'd, I better have a lot of money if I'm 2,000 years old. If, I'm sleeping on your couch, James. I think it's time for me to go get going. There ain't no point of living 2,000 years if I've eaten top ramen for, for dinner instead of steaks. Uh, <laughs> there, there, I don't, I don't know if that, I don't know if that's the life for me. Living in a one-bedroom apartment in a garage in a couch, uh, begging for a top ramen as a vampire. That's a pretty shitty life, I think, dude. I'm sorry, but um. Back to what it uh, helping people. This this is what the case. This is what cases we like to do. And this was a really good guy, and he deserved to get help because I, I was afraid he was gonna do something because he was to the point where he was. And I'm like, don't let this thing take you. Don't let it kill you. And I talked him, kept telling him he'll be all right, and it was. We, me and my wife, helped him at midnight sometimes, one o'clock. We'd be drinking. I ain't gonna lie. I have a couple of drinks with my wife on the weekends. I enjoy myself, and I would sit there and help him on my time, and I wouldn't care. That was what I was supposed to do. And I'll help anybody if you need my help. You know, one of us. You always get a hold of us. There's always ways. Staring in the abyss tells the abyss. We have emails. You can see it. We're on the show. Email us on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. YouTube, whatever you guys do, we're always going to be here for you. We'll always help you, especially me or James. It doesn't matter. Most of the time, me and James stay up late. Like right now, it's 11 o'clock where he's at. It's 8 o'clock here. James is a busier guy than he, he he has to take, you know, sometimes he takes his wife to the doctors or they go out and do stuff. But most of the time, James goes around to bed 1 or 2 o'clock. He used to stay up all night, but that's because he had horrible dreams. And I understand that. That's where he gets his books from. But he's kind of calmed down a little bit. Me, it's just hard for me to sleep, guys. I ain't gonna lie. Um, sometimes my my back hurts. I have to sleep like this because I have a sciatica problems. Um, and and it I'll fall asleep around one, sometimes twelve. Get up at six or seven, and that's it. I'm I can't sleep no more. I just always been like that. Um, I'm breaking down. I'm getting old, guys. We're we're not like we were when we started. You know, we're in our mid 40s, late 40s, and, you know, things go wrong. <laughs> it's just how it goes. We're in better shape than we were seven years ago. I'll tell you that. We're in really good shape. Um, look a hell of a lot better. You know, we're always good looking people, but, you know, the people are always going to hate, but it is what it is. Um, <laughs> but that being said, we helped Don. 
And and the crazy thing is James really didn't get involved, nothing against him, but he didn't really get involved in this case. He knew about it. He knew some of the stuff was going on. He knew it was go- he knew I would tell him what was going on and he almost got involved, but I dealt with it. I don't have to always go run and help James, go, you know, just because James is somebody, oh, I got to get him on my video like somebody did a couple people have done with us. They'll call us on Facebook just to get us on there so they can say we were on their show. And I don't do that. I, I don't, I, if I need James, if it's something I can't handle, I'll call him. And I have, I have a good team out here. He has pretty good team out there in Virginia slash Pennsylvania. They know what they're doing. So then I don't need to help them unless if it's a case, I would have loved to help them with that one case that the guy passed away. Cause I think I might've been able to help that guy. But it was too far away, you know, maybe I wouldn't have. I don't know, but I would have better like to try because I'm on a different level with that kind of stuff than other people are. But just so you know, I'm happy Don was able to get the help he needed because sleeping in your truck when you never knew all this shit was this, he thought he was losing his mind. People were saying he was crazy. He wasn't. There really was something there. I felt it. I dealt with it. I seen it. The man was getting tortured and he needed help and I helped him. A lot of people thought he, you know, he's just crazy or he's just an old man. He's lonely. He wasn't. He needed help. Nicest guy, man. When you guys see him on the show, you're like, like he, he met Jay Leno. He told me the stories about making Jay Leno. He's a really cool guy. They were friends. The guy's met a lot of famous people. He was a really nice guy, really down to earth, really sweet guy. And I feel sorry for him. Yeah, uh, you know, he was having a lot of issues, especially with these fucking things bothering him. It, you know, he was already having health issues because he had problems with his heart. He's doing a little better now, but that was already something. He was in the hospital for six months, and then he comes back to deal with this bullshit. And I had to help him. Neighbors were, I think the neighbors did a little bit of it. I think they were helping. I don't know for a fact, but I can't prove it. But he said they quit talking to him too. But then he said once he found the Ouija board in the trash, what was weird one day, he said he saw that. And when you talk to Don, he was capable. He'd have a straight conversation. He's He likes to talk, I'll tell you that. <laughs> but he's a good old man, and I liked him. And really sweet guy. My wife really likes him, and he's funny. He has a lot of stories. He, he flies air. He flew airplanes, helicopters, motorcycles. He works on them. He knows what he's talking about, cars, all that shit. And very, very intelligent person. Um, that's why it was always good to talk to him. He's always genuine. And I'm glad I helped him. And I would help the girl in Pennsylvania. It's just that she's a different level of crazy <laughs> sometimes. And something that me and I, 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 I did, was helping her. It's just it, some people, are they have PTSD. And she didn't want to do certain things I wanted her to do. And that damn bird was another something else. She People have these talking bird, parrot, whatever the fuck. She needed to let that thing go. I think that was some of the problem. But um, but come to find out, the bird was owned by the guy that was dead, supposedly attacking her. So that was another story we'll talk about one day. And I don't want to bring her name into it. But I would like to help her even though she was a pain in the ass sometimes because a lot of people are giving up and I don't like to give up on people, but you know, cause I feel like I can help anybody. And if I can't at least try to, and I know James is the same way. If somebody needs help, I want to try to help them and see if they're full of shit or they're, they need help or they need to get other kind of help like medical and medicine. And they're just have, they're crazy. There's sometimes that happens. They're 5150. They're hallucinating, but sometimes they're not. Sometimes they're having this shit bother them and attack them. That's why I want to do the show because I'm I'm proud of what I did. I'm proud of our team. Again, as I think we have one of the best teams in the world, and I'm willing to prove that. You know, they could say whatever you want, but yet they won't. You don't want us to prove a point because we will. Um, Because <clears throat> James is good at doing what he does. I'm good at what I do. If me and James go on shows, if we ever do, if we don't, it is what it is. But we're still going to do this show because we enjoy it. But I'll tell you this right now, I, be- I don't believe that. I've always believed that we were going to do something, and we are. And we are still. People know who we are everywhere. And it's crazy to me because I was told a long time ago 
by numerous people, I was never going to do nothing in my life. It's since I was a kid, I was worthless. I should just fucking disappear. And I didn't really matter. I'm never going to really amount to nothing. And I took that instead of doing something stupid, I took it as fuel. I got tired of hearing that. So I went, started doing stuff on Facebook and turned out to be this person. I'm old boy. Internationally known paranormal investigator, ghost hunter, podcast host, everything you can imagine, I do it now with paranormal world and crypto. And I didn't, I didn't, I believed in myself. And that's all that matters. I want people to realize I don't care what you believe in or what at the end of the day, what you think. It's just the point is, you have to believe in yourself and you got to believe in your team and the people around you. And I've been doing this for about eight years with James and I've known James for 10 years when his books were just starting to sell. When he just started coming out, I knew him and look at him now. When I first met him, he was a guy that was doing construction. His start, he just had got his books out. I think they just signed him and he told me he was, you know, at first it was going slow. It took him about a year. All of a sudden, he doesn't do that no more. He does what he wants. He builds cannons and blows up barns. And he and he's proud of that. Plays Xbox with pride. The farming simulation is his life. And trust me, that's his favorite game. Warcraft's coming to Xbox soon. And that's what we've all been waiting for. And I can't wait. <laughs> so that's what we've been waiting for for years. And, and they're talking about it soon. And I, I just can't wait for that day because I don't think I'm ever going to get off the Xbox again. <laughs> but that being said, we do this stuff to help people. We're not doing it to become famous and become rich and, and bullshit people. And I'm not going to do that. I know people are going to, somebody's going to say we are, I don't give a fuck. If you need our help, we're always here. We'll try to get somebody to help you. We can do this. We've done this numerous times. This isn't the first time. This was just a hard case that we we triumphed as a team. Just because me and Jackie were the only one doesn't mean it wasn't a team effort. We I showed the videos. James helped with the videos. He does the audio. audio. Everybody knows their role. This was a team effort. It wasn't just, oh, I did it all myself. Hey, guys, well, fuck you. No, it was a team effort because we have one of the best teams in the world. We have one of the best podcasts in the world. People try to emulate us, how we do things. We were the one of the first to ever have a team in California and Virginia. I don't give a fuck what anybody says. They copying us because I know they are. We've, there's maybe a couple people who are doing it, but we made it cool to do. And we're still making it cool. A lot of people steal our ideas. You know how many people have the name staring in the abyss or stole the abyss or into the abyss or the toilet blush in the, in the abyss or the hot, the, the sandwich in the abyss? I'm just joking about that. But you know how many people use that name now? Staring in the abyss is forever. We're going to be forever. And that's all that matters. But that being said, I'll let James go because I can tell he wants to talk. So there he goes, family and misfits. There's a difference between taking an online class and learning the name of some demons and becoming a demonologist and actually knowing how to deal with these things. Big difference. I've been doing this for a long time. I worked my first case over 30 years ago, like 32 years ago, I was 17 years old. That's when I first started working cases. I've been researching this stuff since about five years old. So we're talking like 44 years of researching. Now, if you're good at math, you'll know that I'm 49 years old, getting ready to turn 50 in November. It's been my whole life. I've been working cases a long, long time. And I've seen a lot of things. And I've dealt with a lot of things. And I can tell you from all of that experience, 
that 99% of the things that you see on TV on all these shows are absolute nonsense. I have not seen anybody on a TV show that actually knows how to work a demonic case. Never seen it. Now, I don't watch all of these shows, so it could be that there's somebody out there that does it that I don't know about. But I've seen bits and pieces of most of them. And I've seen how they handle things. And I can tell you that most of this stuff is just for the show. It's not real. What they're doing is not how you actually work a case. It's not how you actually help people. Old boy was right when he said that you just don't go in one time and get rid of something. That's not how it works. Now, we've said that before. And I'll get into it a little bit deeper and try to explain this uh, to you guys so everybody can really understand what this is all about. And in doing so, I'll say some words and some phrases that you will have heard before. You will have heard other paranormal people say them. But I guarantee you those people don't know what they actually mean. They don't know the full understanding of what they're saying. One thing is, when you get rid of something, you go in, you cast it out, okay? Most likely it's coming back. Almost all the time it comes back. And that happens many times. Now, that's not a result of you not being strong enough or you not knowing what you're doing or anything like that. It has to do with why demons attach to you, how demons attach to you, the mechanics of the whole thing, how it works. Okay, this is something nobody ever talks about. You, you won't see a paranormal show in the world that's talking about this because they don't, they don't know it. They don't have the information. They don't have any idea why or how or anything like that okay the way it works is everybody goes through trauma in their lives okay one person's trauma is another person's not a big deal you know there's varying degrees of this it's not like it has to be the world's worst thing most horrific thing okay it's just something that that causes you emotional trauma, something that causes negative emotions to root and fester inside of you, okay? When those, those moments happen where you go through trauma and you have a, a negative emotional response, depending on the severity of that trauma, it will create a wound in your soul, okay? Now, it's, it's hard to picture this because your soul is a spiritual thing. It's not a physical thing. Okay? It's not like it's a ball of, of something you can reach out and touch. Okay, It's, it's an ethereal, spiritual thing. So you kind of have to use your imagination a little bit to kind of picture this in your mind. But it creates a, a wound in the soul. That wound collects those negative emotions, much like a physical wound in your arm or your leg or something like that will collect bacteria and, and, and dirt and stuff like that, okay? So those negative emotions will settle into that wound and they will begin to fester. So that every time, and, and the way you know that this is true is whatever trauma you've had in your life, think about a time in your life where something horrible happened to you. And it really messed you up. Maybe you got in a bad car accident or maybe uh, somebody assaulted you and it really shook you up and scared you and really messed with your head. Or, you know, maybe it's something as simple as you were at home one night and you were sitting there and you were watching horror movies and you got kind of a little spooked and there was nobody home with you. And then maybe you were stacking boxes up of something in the other room earlier in the day and you didn't quite get them lined up right. And so you're sitting there, you're already in an in a amped up, kind of freaked out mood because you've been watching these scary movies and you're, you're kind of on edge. And then all of a sudden from the other room, a box falls 
and smashes on the ground and scares the ever-loving shit out of them. Okay? That could be enough, depending on who you are, to be a traumatic experience and really, really frighten you and scare you. And it will have some negative emotions attached to that, okay? So it doesn't have to be a horrible, horrible event, but usually the most severe ones are, okay? So think about whatever it is in your life that's the most traumatic thing that you can think of that happened to you. It's something that really messed with your head. Think of those negative emotions that you felt during that event happening, whether it's fear, whether it is um, vulnerability, whether it is jealousy, whether it is depression, wh whatever it is that that event made you feel, those emotions. Every time you think of that event, you feel those emotions again. It brings all that back to you. That's what PTSD is all about. It's a traumatic event that took place that causes you to relive it and, and to feel those emotions again as if it's happening to you, okay? That's what happens with a traumatic event. And every time you think of it, you think about those events. Maybe your, your grandmother died or something, and it really messed you up. And every time you think about that, you're filled with just despair and sadness about it. Okay, those are negative emotions. That's a wound in your soul that's been created by that traumatic event. And those emotions fester inside that wound. And you know that they do because every time you think of it, it brings those emotions right back onto you again and you feel it again. Now, where does this apply to demons, right? What does this have to do with anything? What a demon will do is a demon will, will come into your life by a lot of different things, okay? It could be that you're messing with Ouija boards or, or witchcraft or something like that because you saw the craft and you thought it was cool. It could be something like that. Or it could be that you're a heavy drug user, heavy alcohol user, something like that. That could open up doorways for them to come in, okay? There's all kinds of different reasons. Or maybe you went to a, a place that was haunted really bad and had something demonic there and you didn't protect yourself properly and now it's, it's followed you, okay? A whole, whole bunch of reasons why it could happen. But a demon comes up and it will seek out those wounds in your soul. And it will attach itself. You've heard that before, that you have an attachment. A demon is attached to you. That's how that works. A demon will attach itself to that wound in your soul. And those negative emotions that are festering there fuel that demon. Okay? So the reason the demon comes back when you cast it out is because you haven't fixed the problem. You haven't healed that wound in the soul. You haven't gotten rid of those negative emotions. You haven't dealt with that yet. So that anchor point for that demon is still there. You can come in and you can cast that sucker out. And he has to go away for a while. But he will come back. If that wound still exists, that anchor point, he will come back. And he will re-anchor to it. Okay? So how do you deal with that? Now this is something that nobody talks about either. Because nobody knows how to do this. Well, I'm not saying nobody. There are people who know how to do this. But nobody on TV knows how to do this. Let's put it that way. Let me clarify because precision matters. Okay? I'm not trying to call out people. I'm not trying to pretend like I know everything. There are other people that do this too. But the people on TV are not doing this because they're not actual investigators are not really working cases okay so what you do you have to sit down with that person you do your initial interview that takes place in every case you find out what's happening and then you do a another interview that has to do with trauma okay that's where you're going to sit down with this person one-on-one -on -one without everybody around because you're going to be getting into some real personal stuff and you run them through the traumas in their life. You say, you know, what traumatic events have happened to you? What things have happened that have really messed you up, really caused a lot of problems in your life? You know, you, you work through those traumas. You get them to put themselves back mentally into that place again and, and kind of mentally go back through that trauma and relive it, okay? This will cause those negative emotions to show themselves again. That's what always happens when you think about the trauma. It, you feel those those ways, right? So you put them back in that place. And I'm not talking hypnosis. I'm not talking any heebie-jeebie bullshit, okay? You're just talking to the person. You're getting them to put themselves back there in their own mind, 
through their memory and try to put themselves there again and relive it. That will bring those emotions out. And then you have them describe to you. What are you feeling? What emotions are you feeling right now? Is it sadness? Is it terror? Is it fear? Is it, you know, jealousy? What are you feeling? What is that making you feel? Anger? Rage? What? They will go through and they will tell you exactly the emotions that they're feeling when you're thinking about that incident that happened, that trauma, right? So then once they can name and define those emotions, then you go through each one of those emotions and you have that person hand that emotion over to Jesus and ask Jesus to take it away, right? This works. It works for believers, obviously. But it can also work for non-believers, even if you don't believe in Jesus, because just the, the act of turning that emotion over to Jesus, right, you are releasing that emotion from that wound. You are consciously making a decision to let it go. And you'd be surprised how powerful your mind is. Your mind can heal you. Your mind can make you sick. Okay, your mind holds a lot of power. So the conscious decision of letting that emotion go by turning it over to Christ, right? That is symbolic. You are taking it as if it was a physical object and you are handing it to somebody else. Now it's your problem. I don't have to deal with it anymore. It's not with me anymore. It's with you now, right? That works because you're releasing it. You're letting it go. Okay, you do that with each one of those emotions. Then you take a break. You sit down, you just shoot the shit about whatever. Hey, Cowboys got a good team this year, whatever, right? Whatever nonsense you want to talk about, doesn't matter. What I always try to do is I, I'm a funny guy. So I like try to cut some jokes and just cut up with them and make them laugh and just get their mind off of that shit. You don't want them thinking about the trauma anymore. You want them laughing and having a good time. You do that for 10, 15 minutes, whatever it takes to kind of get them in a whole different frame of mind. Okay, now once they're happy and they're, they're all good again, then you sit back down and you say, okay, I want you to go back there again. I want you to put yourself back in that place again. Relive it. Tell me what you're feeling. What emotions are coming up when, when you relive this trauma? Now, what's amazing is if you do this right and you know what you're doing, and you, you're able to walk this person through it properly. What you'll find is each time they run through this trauma, most of the emotions they felt the first time, they don't feel anymore, they're gone. Every once in a while you have one that sticks around, but it's less. So what you do is you get rid of it again. You hand it off again if it's still there. Most times it won't be. But the other interesting thing is new emotions will pop up. A great example of this is, is I worked a case once, and I'm not going to use names or anything like that because this is very, very sensitive, private stuff, okay? So when I tell you this, this is from a case I worked. This actually happened to somebody, but you have no idea who I'm talking about, what state I was in, none of that, okay? It, it's completely, as far as you're concerned, hypothetical, but it actually happened, okay? This case was a lot like the one that old boy worked in a way. Because the case he worked was dealing with an incubus and a succubus and sexual assault by a spirit, okay? This case was also that, sexual assault, but it wasn't by a demonic entity. It was by humans, okay? This person had been savagely raped. I mean, in, in, a, in a horrible way, okay? And that really, really, really messed her up, as you would imagine. That's a horrifying thing to go through. So there was a lot of helplessness. There was a lot of fear. I mean, fear reaching the point of absolute paralyzing terror, okay, when she first would go back into this with me. Those kind of associated emotions were what we were dealing with. We went through a couple times and we got rid of them all, okay? But what took their place was instead of the fear and the helplessness, she felt anger. Anger verging on absolute blinding rage. She felt so furious that she was victimized that way. 
And then what went along with that was the feeling of being victimized. It wasn't anymore that she was helpless. She didn't feel helpless anymore, but she felt like she was victimized. She was abused and she was pissed about it. Now, you might say that is good. That is a good result, but it's not because that's still a negative emotion. That still leads that anchor point. OK, you still got to go through the process more. You take those new emotions. You go through that same process. You, you pray, you hand them over to Jesus. You tell him to take them away from you. And then now during this process, when this is happening, each time you, you hand over an emotion, that's your part. That's what you have to do. OK, but as the person helping you through this process, I have a role to play as well, because each time that you do that then I am going to come in and I'm going to cast out any demons that are attached to that negative emotion. And I'm going to heal that bit of the wound in the soul that was left by that negative emotion, by that trauma, okay? And then when we're done with all of them, and you can relive that trauma with no negative feelings anymore, it's just like you're watching a movie, like it happened to somebody else. You don't feel nothing about it anymore. When we reach that point, then I'm going to do a final casting out of all demons attached to it and i'm gonna heal that wound in your soul okay now the way i'm healing that wound in your soul is not once again no heebie-jeebie bullshit i'm not some mystical healer that has magical powers that's not how it works okay you're asking jesus to heal that wound in your soul he's doing the work i'm just walking you through the process because i know what i'm doing okay that's one trauma that might take hours to get through one trauma most people in their life have hundreds, okay? So if you're dealing with, especially a lot of these severe demonic cases, that person is going to have dozens at least traumas in their life that are anchor points for these things. Because most times when you're dealing with a demonic case like that, something powerful, something bad, that's not the only demon. People think you have a demon and you just have a demon. That's not the way it works either. There could be hundreds of demons attached to you. Because remember, each time that demon comes back after you cast it out, the Bible says it comes back stronger than it was before. And it brings seven of its friends. That's what the Bible says. That's how it works. It comes back worse. It comes back with more. Okay, it may not manifest as badly each time. It may appear to be getting weaker as you're going through the process. But the reason it appears to get weaker as you're going through the process because you're casting out a lot of those demons. OK, so it's like you start off against an army and you're picking people off until the army gets smaller and smaller and smaller. So the individual demons might be a little bit stronger than they were before, but there's a hell of a lot less of them. Because some of them ain't coming back because some of them don't have no place to anchor anymore. You see what I'm saying? That's how it works. Now, usually you only have one that actually manifests. The most powerful one that's there will be the mouthpiece, so to speak. OK, they'll be the one that is doing the talking. And that's where people have that misconception. That's where people think you only got one demon. No, you're only talking to one demon. They have hundreds of demons probably. And that's why I say you have to get somebody who knows what the hell they're doing. Because some people come in, and I even know exorcists that come in, they do an exorcism, they think they get rid of the one demon, and they move on with their life. That person is not well yet. They're not free. They still have a bunch of demons that have come back. They still have the wounds in their soul. That's why with us, it's very important after you get your exorcism and all that stuff's taken care of, I always recommend that you go through that emotional and spiritual healing process. You gotta heal those wounds in your soul. You gotta cast out all those demons. You gotta get rid of all those negative emotions. Each time you do that, what you're doing is you're getting rid of those anchor points, okay? You're you're closing the doorways. You've heard that before. People say you gotta close the doorways in order to keep these things from coming back after you. Now, what people think when they hear that is that means you gotta correct your behavior because you're doing something wrong. And that's why these things are attacking you. That's not the truth. It's not that you're doing something wrong. Now, don't get me wrong. There are behaviors you can do that will invite things to come after you, okay? That is 100% true. But that's not what closing those doorways actually means. You have to heal those wounds in the soul. You have to cast out those demons. 
and deal with those negative emotions. If you don't do that, you haven't closed anything. And they can come back and they will come back. Now, sometimes they'll come back and they'll be very quiet for a very long time because they don't want to tangle with you again. But doesn't mean that that person's okay. Doesn't mean that they're healed. You know, there's a lot more to it than you see in the movies, than you see on TV. And the problem is when you're talking about a TV show, it's very difficult to to document that process for for many reasons. One, it, it takes a tremendous amount of time to actually work a case to completion the correct way. It takes a long time. So it's not like you can go in there, deal with it, and be out in a half hour show or an hour show. This is a, a full 10, 12 seasons of a show, you know, to get through everything. And the other problem is that to actually solve it correctly, you're kind of getting down in the in the muck, you know? You're playing around in areas where most people hide from other people. You're getting into things that, that people don't talk about, that embarrassing things, things that happen to them that are horrific, that they never talk to another person about ever. So you're dealing with insanely sensitive material that you just literally can't film and put on TV because that would be a massive betrayal of that person's trust and a massive betrayal of that person's life, really. I mean, I wouldn't feel right doing it, even if they really wanted me to, you know, because some of that stuff, like I, I, there's been cases I put on the channel where we show the interview, we show the investigation, we show the casting out, right? But I don't ever show the emotional and spiritual healing process. I will explain it to you. I'll explain to you how to do it. I'll run you through it like I did tonight, right? I'll give you information. But I have never actually shown that on camera, and I never will. Um, because it's it's too personal to people, you know? And unfortunately, that is the part that is the ratings getter right there. That is the part that they will want you to show on TV because that's the most interesting part. But the problem is you just can't because people do... See, here's the thing. People do some messed up stuff, okay? Everybody does. Every single human being on this planet does things and has done things that they would never talk about in public, that they are ashamed of because they know it's wrong, right? Every one of us sins. doesn't matter who you are. And that's the misconception that a lot of people have. They think that if you're a Christian, right? Like I'm a Christian, I'm a pastor, I cast out demons, I do this for a living, right? They think that somebody like me it's above all that. Like I'm some holy man that never sins and never does anything wrong. That's just not the reality of life, man. None of us, none of us. The apostles sinned, okay? They couldn't even go without sinning. And they literally knew Jesus. They hung out with the dude. He was their bro. And they couldn't go without sinning. Paul famously talked about that in, in multiple letters. In Romans and Corinthians, he talked about it all over the place. That Sin is prevalent in your life, even if you're saved. If we, if we could go without sinning, we wouldn't need Jesus. The reason we need Jesus is because we're all fucked up, man. We're all garbage people. That's just the, the truth of it. I'm not saying we're not good people. There's good people that aren't saved. Being a good person means nothing. It, it has nothing to do with your salvation. You know, I think as a general rule, and there are exceptions, so, you know, I'm not saying everybody, but as a general rule, I think the majority of people on this planet are good. The majority of these people on this planet, all they want is to have a good life, and they want their family to have a good life, and they, they just want to have friends and, and have a good time and get along with people. They don't want to hurt anybody. 
They don't want to do anything wrong. That's the majority of people. Now, when I say the majority of people are saved, I don't know the stats on it, but probably not. There's a lot of people out there that aren't saved. Let's talk about old boy. He's right there. I mean, he is the proverbial elephant in the room. Old boy's a good dude, man. He, he He's not trying to hurt nobody. He doesn't believe the way I believe. He's not saved. And he's he's got a rude awakening coming one day, and that sucks. And, and believe me, it really sucks for me to say that. I love this man. He is my brother. I would die for that dude. He's my bro. And it sucks, but there's nothing I can do about it. You know what I mean? Doesn't mean that he's any less of a person. Doesn't mean he's a bad person just because he doesn't believe like I believe. He's a good person. He's just lost. And you know how I know he's lost? Because I was fucking lost once too. I understand. I, I, I was there, man. Only by the grace of God did I do what I did. And you know why I came back to Christ? You know why I came back to God? Because I died. That's what it took to bring me back. I literally died. And what I saw brought me back. And look at what I do now. Now I fight demons and I save people for a living. I was the guy that would literally beat you into hamburger if you looked at me wrong. I was a scary person before I came back to Jesus. I was nobody's fucking role model. You can still see it if you watch We're Screwed. You can still see that person in there sometimes. Because I get a little fired up sometimes when we're talking. You know, I get on a rant and I'm ranting and raving and going and I get a little feisty. You can still see the remnants of that person that I used to be. It's only through God never giving up on me, really. He loved me enough, even though I was a complete and total fuck up. He loved me enough to just stick with me and keep saying, you know what, you'll get it one day. You'll get it one day. But I didn't get it. And I grew up in the church, dude. It's not like I didn't know. I knew. But I was pissed at God because the way my grandmother died, and we got in a huge fight, and, and I never had to say I loved her and goodbye. The last thing I said to her was, I hate you. And that really fucked me up for a long time. And I hated God. And God literally had to kill me and let me know how much he loved me to bring me back. Completely changed my life. Does that mean that I don't sin? No. Mm -hmm. Once again, if you watch We're Screwed, you'll know that I have a colorful vocabulary sometimes. I get a little, little fired up. You know, I still sin. I'm human, man. Does that mean that, that I can't preach the word of God? Does that mean that I'm not saved because I, I sin? No. Because you're saved by grace, not by works, remember? There's nothing that you can do that, that God's not going to forgive you and love you for, man. God loves you. It doesn't matter how bad of a person you are. It doesn't matter what a screw up you are. That's what the amazing part of it is. And so the reason I tell you all that is that a lot of these people, they're dealing with trauma. They're dealing with, with being victimized. And they're being victimized over and over and over again by these evil pieces of shit demons. And so what we ought to be doing as Christians and as, as paranormal people, right? We ought to be helping these people. Not making them think it's your fault that you, you're, this is happening to you. Because if you want to throw stones, we can throw some stones, guys. There ain't a single one of you out there that ain't doing something that could bring these things to you. Ain't a single one of you. We risk it every time we go to a haunted location. You risk it every time you get your fortune told. You risk it every time you deal with a psychic. You would you risk it every time you get involved in witchcraft. You, you risk it every time you do Ouija boards. All that bullshit you ain't supposed to be doing. Every time you do an investigation and you talk to the dead, you are risking it. Because we're not supposed to be doing that. Every single one of you are guilty. Every single one of you. That's why you got to know what you're doing. You got to know how to protect yourself. Because if you don't, here's what happens. 
not only do you let the people down you're trying to help because you don't know what the fuck you're doing but also you take whatever crap is attached to you from all the different places you've been that's been you've been dragging along with you because you don't know what the hell you're doing and you take those demonic entities or those malevolent entities and you bring them to the new place some other family that didn't ask for it they're just trying to get some help and what they were dealing with is a low-level spirit thing that isn't that big of a deal. It's just a little bit spooky. They hear stuff in their house, and now it freaks them out a little bit. That's what they were dealing with, but they made the mistake of calling you because you pretended like you knew what the fuck you were doing. And now you have brought actual dangerous stuff to their home. And that dangerous stuff says, hey, look here, I like this. I'm going to stick around for a while. I'm going to beat the shit out of the baby. Why not? That happened to us. That was a, a case that we worked where somebody had something that wasn't that big of a deal that could have easily been taken care of if the people knew what the fuck they were doing. But they pretended like they knew more than they knew. And they ended up bringing something way worse to that person's house. And it ended up with a little baby getting the shit beat out of it. And horrible shit started happening there. And we had to come in and deal with that. Now, should those people have known better? Should they have known to, to ask the right questions so that they didn't get in that situation? In a perfect world, maybe, but how the hell do they know? They're not in this business. They don't have any idea what they're supposed to be looking for. All they know is something's scaring the crap out of them and they need help. So somebody says, hey, I know this guy that does ghost stuff. You want me to call him? Yeah, call him. So then they call him and does this guy, is he honest? Does he say... Well, you know, I like to watch ghost shows and I like to pretend I'm a badass on the internet, but I don't fucking know anything. I'm just a jackass. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. Does, does he say that? No. Why? Because he wants to be a big shot. So then, oh yeah, I know, I know what I'm doing. I gotta do all this. I, I ain't afraid of this. I'm a badass. All this bullshit, right? So then the people think, oh great, I got somebody who knows what the hell they're doing. They're gonna come in and help me. So then Dumbledick comes marching in, dirty, 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 starts running to the, to, the, to the ghost in the house, trying to act like a badass. All he does is make things worse. Then when things are worse and they say, what the hell, everything's way worse than it was. Then he says, oh, it's your fault. And then he just leaves. But what he brought with him stayed. Caused a lot of issues, a lot of issues. <laughs> That's the real world implications of the paranormal field becoming popular is you have all these wannabes who watch stuff on TV and think they know what the fuck they're talking about. They have no idea. They, they, don't, they don't know what they're doing because the people on TV don't know what they're doing. The people on TV are not doing the real stuff. They're doing bullshit. Now, some of them get on there with a, with a spirit box and stuff, and they talk to stuff, and they think they're doing the right thing, but they don't actually know how to work these cases. They have no experience in actually dealing with real demons. Now, do I fault them for that? No. I don't fault the people on TV for that because they're not claiming they do. Yes, they're claiming they know what they're doing, but they're not, they're not going there and working cases with families. And causing problems, they're going to locations and, and making a TV show. But the problem is, when it becomes this popular, is you have a bunch of normal people who watch those shows, and then they try to go and work cases with real-life families. And they're in way over their heads. They have no idea what they're doing. And it causes a major, major issue. And, I mean, it's gotten to the point with me that I don't work with anybody anymore, really. Like, I got I got my teams, and that's about it. You know, I don't, I don't mess with, like, working with this group or with this group or this person. It's just too many wannabes and idiots that don't know what the fuck they're doing. And everybody argues all the time. They, they pretend like they know more than you. And they, well, and I'm like, dude, shut up. You don't know what you're talking about. How many demonic cases have you had? 
What's the worst thing that's ever happened to you on a case? Tell me the scariest, hairiest, worst thing that you've ever been involved in. It's usually, oh, one time I went into a room and I felt sick. Or one time something scratched me a little bit. That's all. So you have no experience, man. You don't know what the fuck you're doing. I was working a case one time, and it was actually with with another exorcist that really knows their stuff. They know what they're doing. My job during this particular case was not to cast demons out, okay? Because I had a, a real high-level exorcist with me that that's what he was there for. My job was the muscle, okay? My whole job was to make sure that the person who was getting the exorcism didn't hurt the exorcist. Because that's another thing they don't tell you. They act like you can just say, the power of Christ compels you. And the person sits there and goes, blah, 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 and everything's cool. No. Them motherfuckers get up out of the chair and try to kill you sometimes. That's the reality of it. If you're dealing with a dangerous demon, you think that thing's just going to sit there and let you do that? No. That's why you have big sons of bitches like me that you bring with you on the case. And when you're actually doing a real exorcism and that thing is manifesting, you need somebody like me that can grab a hold of that son of a bitch and make sure they don't get out of that chair if they get out of line. That's what I was there for. Now, I'm not talking hurting the person. Like, I'm not going to beat the shit out of somebody sitting in a chair, right? That's not what I'm there for. I'm simply there to make sure that they can't get to the exorcist until he's done. That's my job. So that's what I was doing that day. Okay? That's not my job now. I'm saying that was my job then on that case. And I'm standing there, and he's doing the exorcist. Do, the exorcist is doing the exorcism. The person is getting more and more agitated. And then the demon begins to, to physically manifest. Now, I'm going to stop the story for a second because I want to explain this to people. People think that when somebody's getting an exorcism, they think that it's like the movie The Exorcist, where they get sores all over their face, their head spins around, they vomit pea soup across the room, all that bullshit. That doesn't happen. Okay, that's that's not what happens. What happens is sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes if it is a very powerful demon, it can actually physically manifest in the person. What that means is to take over that person, to actually possess that person. Okay, but it's not something that lasts a long time. It's not like they're always in control. Usually, now there are exceptions, but usually it's a very limited amount of time. So we're talking a couple minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes is kind of the upper limit that I've seen where that demon can physically take control of that person, control their body, the eyes change, the whole face changes. I don't mean physically changes, but I mean just the way they look changes. The eyes look different. The face looks different. They, they go from this to big difference, right? You can see that change. You can see the intensity, but it's worse. It's scary, right? You can see it. They have knowledge that they have no business of knowing. Things that, that you've never told a person in your life, they'll just start spouting and saying out loud. And you're like, how the fuck did you know that? I've never told anybody that. But they start talking about that shit, right? And then they also will start lying about your ass too. That's another thing they love to do. They love to lie and try to make you look stupid, look embarrassed, make you upset. So you're like, hey, stop, what are you talking about? You know, that kind of bullshit, right? They want to throw you off your game. They start speaking languages that they have no knowledge of, they don't know. Like something might start talking to you in Latin or in French or, or German or something, and that person doesn't know those languages. That kind of stuff happens. And then every once in a while, if you get a powerful demon and they are able to possess and manifest like that, they will literally get up out of that chair and they'll come at your ass. That's what I mean by the demon began to physically manifest. It, it took over that person and you could see it. So I see this happening and I know that that's my cue. I'm supposed to make sure I'm in between the exorcist and the person getting the exorcism. That way, if they do make a move, they got to go through me. OK, Now I'm not saying I'm going to bitch slap a demon and knock it down. That thing's very strong. OK, that's not the point. The point is for me to be an obstacle. To put up enough resistance. That I can hold that thing at bay. 
because it can't manifest for that long. It can't continue that strength for very long. Okay, so all you got to do is delay it enough. And the whole time that's happening, he's still doing the exercise. Okay, so this begins to happen. I move into position. Now, something crazy happened that I didn't expect. And I've never had it happen before, and I've never had it happen since. It's the only time it's ever happened to me in my life, but I it come out of complete left field. I did not expect this at all. Instead of this thing rushing us and trying to get at the exorcist, it leaned back in the chair instead and just looked at me like I knew something I didn't know. With this little silly, sly grin on its face, like, oh, you're in for it now, fucker, right? That kind of look. And I, that confused me because I'm, I'm ready to fight. I, I think that's what's coming. I think this thing's going to charge me and I'm going to keep it off, right? That's my whole plan. But it leans back and just kind of looks at me. And I'm like, what the fuck is happening? This is strange. But I think, okay, this is okay, though, right? As long as it's not coming, that's good. He can keep doing his job. I can stay in here. Everybody's cool. About 30 seconds later, 30 seconds to a minute later, the door burst open. We're sitting in this person's living room. The door burst open. Somebody kicks the door in. And this fucking guy comes running up, running straight for the exorcist. He's going to attack him. I don't know who the hell this guy is. Just some dude off the street comes running into the house and tries to get the dude. So I step over and grab this fucker, put him into the wall, right? And I don't know what's happening at this point. This is confusing as shit. I've never seen this before. But I am a trained fighter. I've been doing martial arts my whole life. So I can handle a physical encounter. So I do what I'm trained to do. I take this guy out, right? The demon can't manifest for much longer. It gets weaker. It stops. The exorcism continues. It ends. Everything, right? So then this dude kind of comes back to himself. I'm, I'm holding him down on the ground at this point with my knee on, on the upper part of his back, holding him down so he can't move. He kind of comes back to himself and realizes that he's laying on the floor with some big asshole on top of him, right? And he's like, what the fuck is going on? He has no memory of anything happening. According to this guy, he's walking down the street minding his own business. And then the next thing he knows, he's laying on the ground with me on top of him. He has no memory of coming into that house. He has no memory of trying to attack anybody. He doesn't know what's going on. Now, that's the only time that's ever happened that I've ever seen. I'm sure it probably happened before. I'm not saying it's the only time in history, but I'm saying it's the only time it ever happened to me. I've never seen that before. Something that was powerful enough to not just manifest and possess the person that we were dealing with, but to just grab some rando off the street and influence him to come in and attack us. That was absolutely insane. So that is the worst thing that I've ever dealt with on a case, like the most dangerous. Because who knows, that could have ended up very, very bad, right? So the reason I tell you that story is, like, that's the difference between somebody who got a little sick on their stomach when he walked into a room and somebody who's actually dealt with this shit. It's had cases where they are severe and you could potentially die. And that's what you need to realize, that this is not a joke. This is not fun time. This is not a bullshit TV show. This is real life shit. This shit happens. It exists. You know, the reason that succubus and incubus are so difficult to get rid of is not necessarily because they're more powerful, because there's different levels. You could have some that are more powerful, but you could have some that are very weak as well. It's not the, the power of the individual demons that's the problem. The problem is what they're doing. Because you got to think, succubuses and incubuses are usually attacking you when you're either asleep in the shower, in some vulnerable position, right? And they're attacking you sexually. And it's embarrassing. You don't want to tell somebody, hey, man, I was just minding my own business. All of a sudden, this thing come up and diddled my ass. That's, you don't want to fucking say that to nobody. That's embarrassing as hell. So the majority of times when this shit happens, you don't tell nobody. You just live with it until you can't. And then when you can't, if you're very, very lucky, then somehow you find somebody that knows what they're doing and can actually do something about it. But that's rare. 
Usually what happens when you get to the point you can't is you just decide you're not going to live anymore. And that's what happens. And unfortunately, that's the way a lot of these demonic cases end up. Is people are dealing with this stuff for years and years and years, and finally they they lose and they end up dead. You know, old boy talked about that case that we worked. That that was a hard case. It wasn't hard because the demon was so powerful. It was hard because the guy didn't want it gone. That was the issue. Now I still could have cast it out. We still went and we cast it out of the house and all that, um, and it came back. And we were going to go in and do a full exorcism and work the whole process. But the problem was he didn't want it going. So he didn't stick around. He literally ran away. I mean, he took off and just was AWOL for several days during that time period because he didn't want us to do anything to get rid of it. Now, in that case, we did manage to get the mother and the child away from the situation. Because the child was being attacked and the child was being influenced to hurt herself. And she ended up in a mental institution because of it. And so we were able to get her well and right again. We were able to get the wife well and right again and away from him because he was the issue. He's the one that had the attachment. He's the one that wanted the demon there. Once we got them out of that situation and helped them to get set up and, and to get their life back, they were fine. The little girl has no issues anymore. She's happy. She's a happy, wonderful teenager living life and having no issues. She has no mental health problems anymore. She's never been to a, uh, a uh, mental health facility again after she got out because she wasn't crazy. This thing was the problem. Now, we couldn't help him because he didn't want the help. We, I never got to talk to him again after that. He avoided me like to play he, he ran and he ended up dying you know he ended up um drinking himself to death essentially he ended up with liver failure and and died but that case sucked because it was one of those situations where we could have won that we could have easily taken care of that if he would have wanted it but because he didn't want it there wasn't nothing i could do to help him and that sucks you know now, I'm very grateful, and I praise God that I was able to to save that little girl. Because one thing that, if you've listened for a long time, one thing you know about me, I don't like when people prey on children or, or women. That pisses me off. You know, I don't like people that hurt kids. I don't like people that hurt women. I don't like entities or demons that do that. One thing you want, you want me on your bad side, you want me to come after you, that's exactly how you do it. That shit pisses me off. You know, so I was very happy that I was able to save that little girl and that woman and get them safe. But I wish I could have, I could have dealt with that fucking thing. Not really even to save the guy. I mean, yes, that would have been great, you know, but he, he made his choice, you know, but I just wanted to get a hold of that thing and get rid of it because of what it did to that little girl. You know, it was making her cut herself and she would have ended up dead if we wouldn't have got involved. You know, and that's the sad and and honestly the hard reality of working cases is they're fucking heartbreaking, man. They're really heartbreaking. Even on ones that you win, they're still heartbreaking because you got to watch these people suffer. And there's a difference between watching a horror movie and being into that and thinking, oh, this is great. Look at the gore. Look at the scary. This is fun. And seeing it in real life. You know, and what I'm talking about ain't, ain't scary. I'm not talking about seeing some monster in real life. I'm talking about seeing the suffering, seeing people in pain, seeing people scared, man. I don't know if you've ever seen anybody scared, like really scared, like pissing themselves scared. But it's, it's a sad, sad thing to see. And it breaks your heart. And it definitely makes you want to do something about it and help them, you know? So that's kind of all I've got to say on this subject. Um, I think we're pretty much good on time, I'd imagine. We've been going for quite a while, probably about an hour and a half by now. Um, so I'm going to throw it back over to old boy, let him do his final sum up and shout outs, and then I'll be back to wrap up. 
Thank you, brother. Um, yeah, we did about an hour and not that long. Actually, about an hour and um, 28 minutes. I was, I was actually counting it. 27. Um, I want to thank everybody for listening to us on Staring in the Abyss every Sunday nights at 12 a.m. Technically Monday night, 12 a, uh, Monday morning, 12 a.m. Eastern and 9 Pacific on Sunday nights on my side of Pacific. Um, and every Tuesday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern and 5 Pacific. Uh, YouTube, Spotify, check us out on War Screwed. That's me, him, and Andy. Um, on We don't have a set time. It just We do it and we put it out there that day or the next day. It's on YouTube, Spotify also. Um, we're also on cloud with staring, with staring in the abyss, uh, Parax radio, YouTube, check us out. You want to follow us on YouTube, follow James Hersey's YouTube page, subscribe. If you want merchandise, just let us know. We'll tell you, we have shirts, all kinds of cool stuff. Just check us out. He'll tell you where to go. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the show. I want people to know if you have anything that's going on, write us what you guys think. What, if you guys have a problem, you know, somebody has a problem, send to us. We'll help them. We're not Zach Baggins. We're not Ghost Adventures. We're not people like that. Nothing wrong with them. They got to do what they're going to do, but we're here to help people. So if you need help, let us know. We're always there. That being said, I hope everybody has a good night. Miss Fitzgerald's Monster Lovers and Demon Hunters. I fucking love you and have a good night. And there you go, James. The funny thing is, like, on the radio, we kind of strategically chose when we wanted our show. Like, we chose Sunday night at midnight. One, because you know, midnight is kind of a cool time to do a paranormal show and everything. But the reason I did that was because there's nobody else that does a show after that. So, like, if we would have had, like, a show on Friday night at 7 or 8 or whatever, right, we'd have had to be very careful because the next person comes on at a set time. So you got to make sure you're done, right? But I decided that it would be cool to have it Sunday night at midnight because then it doesn't matter if I go over a little bit, right? Because all they're doing is playing reruns after that anyway. So I can go as long as I want, really. But we still had the supposed to be around an hour kind of time limit thing, right? So then we kind of kind of hinted around to uh, Parag, like, hey, uh, what if we just, like, you know, went over a little bit every once in a while? Like, you know, a couple minutes here or there, you know, just kind of floated it like that. And they're like, oh, yeah, that'd be fine. That's no problem. And we're like, woohoo! So it's like an hour and a half, two-hour shows. Like, you don't know what you did because realize that when we started this, we were doing, like, three- and four-hour shows. Like, in the beginning, before we actually got on the radio, we were doing, like, three- and four-hour shows. Uh, so we can... We can definitely bloviate with the best of them. We can talk our asses off. So it's nothing for us to, I mean, some of those episodes of We're Screwed get to be three or four hours when we're, when we're just talking, talking, talking. Uh, so I just think that's kind of funny that you give us an inch and we'll take a mile kind of deal. You know what I mean? They're like, yeah, you know, a couple minutes will be all right. We're like, okay, yeah, we'll do it like, you know, two hours, three hours, whatever. We're going to we're gonna pretty much go until the morning shift comes in. That's, that's like when we'll stop our show. Uh, so that's kind of cool. I like that. Um, the only problem with that, though, is when they do the best of shows on Tuesday night, that is kind of during the prime time. So that kind of runs into an issue because then you got to kind of account for an hour and a half or two hours or an hour and 40 minutes or whatever we decide to do. So, you know, that is could be an issue sometimes. But we love Paradox. They've been good to us. You know, we get along pretty good with them for the most part. They get a little pissy every once in a while with us, but that's okay. We still love them. Um, we're screwed. I'm kind of doing something different with. You know, we, we had a, a meeting, and we decided that we were going to each do a topic so that each person would get, you know, to, to talk about something they wanted to talk about on the show. And that way we could break it up into three different subjects per show so that – it was a little more, you know, interesting for people because it's more of a variety show. We talk about all kinds of stuff. And then I got the idea that since we do such a long show, instead of just doing one long video for it, right, for YouTube and Spotify and everything, where you got to sit through a three-hour show or a four-hour show or whatever it is all at once, what I would do is I'd take each topic and I would make separate videos for them. So each topic that we do has its own video so that 
you can look at literally the title of the videos now and you can say, oh, okay, well, yeah, I want to, I want to check that out. That sounds interesting. And you know that when you click on it, that's what you're going to hear is whatever that topic is. Whereas before I would just kind of pick whatever the most interesting thing we talked about. And that's what I would make the title, you know? So you might tune into a show thinking we're talking about one thing and then hell we're over here talking about something completely different for a lot of the show. But that's just kind of the way it worked. So I think that's kind of a cool thing. And I, I think that it'll, it'll end up working pretty good. We're screwed was doing really well back in the day. And, uh, me and old boy made the conscious decision to, to concentrate on staring instead and do staring. And we've done really well with staring. I mean, staring is, is a, a successful show. You know, we got a hell of a lot of listeners uh, on the radio and everything. YouTube, YouTube used to be great. I mean, YouTube, we'd put the show up and we'd get a couple hundred thousand views on it. You know, it, it was pretty good. I got, I got shows on YouTube. It's got over half a million views. I've got well over millions of views in total on that channel, you know, but we kind of got shadow banned on YouTube. So it's kind of went downhill to where it takes a lot longer now for the shows to, to get any kind of big numbers because they don't push it at all anymore. Uh, just because of what we talk about a lot of times, uh, as far as politics goes and that kind of stuff. And you, you know how it is, you know, how it is where they censor shit. And so that's an issue we ran into there. Uh, we just started Spotify. So uh, I look for that to be growing. We, you know, people listen on Spotify. Um, we are not doing like millions of, of numbers or anything on Spotify yet, but we'll get there eventually. You know, the audience will find it. You know, you keep doing good shows and the audience will, will come. You know, it just pisses me off when, when people censor you and, and shadow ban you and all that bullshit. Because it, it, it's, it's ridiculous. There's no reason for it. You know, we're supposed to live in a free country where you can say what you want. Even if you don't agree, you shouldn't try to shut me up. That's a that's a pussy move, you know. But anyway, love you guys. Appreciate you guys. Hope that you have a great night. Let me know down in the comments section what you think. Uh, as always, it's up to you to make up your own mind. Uh, in the description box of every single video on YouTube, youtube.com slash James Hershey Jr., if you are listening on the radio. In the description box of every single video is the link to the merch store. So if you want staring merch or tails merch or soon to be worse screwed merch, whenever I get off my ass and actually do it. Um, what's sad is I have everything ready. I just have to actually make the damn shirts like on the computer. I got to digitally do it and then we're done. I just haven't done it yet, but that'll be coming soon. But the link to that is in the description box of every video. So if you're into that and you want merch for one of the shows or whatever, then that's where you can find it. Um, up to you. I don't care either way. You know, if you find this interesting, if you find it entertaining in any way, you know, a like, a, you know, a share, a subscribe would be awesome. I, if you don't, I don't care. Just just watch the show if you want, you know, whatever you want to do, man. I'm not one of these, these whores that's out here trying to hawk all this shit on you. You know, if, if you enjoy the channel and you want to subscribe, hey, that's great, man. I appreciate that. If you want to share, that's even better. I'm not going to argue with you. But if you just want to tune in and watch, and that's fine too, man. Enjoy. You know, it's here for you guys to enjoy. It's free, and we're not trying to make, you know, a fortune off of it or anything like that. Even the merch store. Like the merch store, if you go and you buy merch off most people, it's like crazy expensive. They mark it way up and make all this money off of it. Our merch is right over what it costs us to make it. I'm not even trying to make money off the merch. It's just there in case you want it because we had a lot of people that were asking for it. And so then I made a store to, so they could get it if they wanted to. But it doesn't cost you much more than it cost me. You know, the reason it doesn't cost you what it costs me is because you, you have to kind of round up. You can't do it individually. You have to do it at the next dollar amount. So it is what it is. Anyway, I'm still talking. You guys don't give a shit about any of this. I love you guys. I hope you have a great night. And we will catch you next week. And there will be a lot more videos coming because uh, now we're doing We're Screwed and we're doing I'm doing like We're Screwed shorts and all kinds of stuff, all kinds of new stuff that I'm excited about and I'm playing with. So hope you guys watch, hope you enjoy, and we will catch you on the next one. So I speak to you again. Love many, trust few, and do harm to none. God loves you, and so do we. Bye-bye.